It's now time for member statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest is first. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, vape de devices and e-cigarettes are continuing to grow in popularity in Ontario and around the world. Mm -hmm. Originally marketed as a harm reduction product for adult smokers, more and more young people are taking up vaping, regardless of whether or not they were smokers in the past. Public health advocates were, have expressed concern that vaping is a new way to get youth addicted to nicotine, the active ingredient in cigarettes. In 2018, soon after the provincial election, this Conservative government loosened regulations to allow advertisements for vapes and e-cigarettes in convenience stores and gas stations, despite numerous concerns raised at Committee uh, of Social Policies, and I was sitting there, by experts and public members uh, and members of the public. Now the government is walking back this wrong-headed move. With the announcement that point-of-sale advertisements for vaping products will be phased out again by fall of next year. While eliminating point-of-sale advertisements is a step back in the right direction, we should go further. My colleagues, uh, the MPP from Nickel Belt, has brought forward a private member's bill calling, the, calling for increased regulation on vaping, including a full ban on advertising and restrictions on flavors and the ad, uh, amount of nicotine in e-cigarettes. Vaping is a new phenomenon, Speaker, and the long-term health effects are not known yet. We simply do not have enough information to allow for it to be pu publicly advertised like this. So I'm asking this government to take a smart and educated approach to this public health issue and ensure that we keep vaping products out of the hands of the youth. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last Saturday I was heartened to attend the second Project Spotlight 2019 that was organized by Joy Beyond Vision community across UHUB and Broker Team Insurance. This was an inclusive screening of Hong Kong documentary film, My Voice, My Life. It is directed by the Oscar-winning director, Ruby Yang. The success of this free event was not just the great movie, but how it was presented that touched the audience and myself the most. Through the wireless headset systems, the movie was communicated to a group of visually impaired audience members. The group of young vocal talents from across your hub performed the live description. It was provided, I was provided with a pair of tinted glasses to experience how much the visually impaired would have missed. After the show, the audience members broke down in tears because the audio description allowed them to fully enjoy the movie with their loved ones. This experience also touches the young volunteers from across UHUB. They treasure what they have and how meaningful it is to support the people that need things the most. Thank you to Project Spotlight. Thank you, member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. Today, high school students, sorry, today high school teachers are on strike across our province to fight for public education and our children's future. This government's strategy is to try and divide parents and teachers to ram through these cuts. But parents are standing with teachers. Parents like those in my riding who got together to start up a group called the West End Parents Network. I have a statement from these parents that they wanted me to read at Queen's Park today. This is what it says. By now, it should be obvious that parents and families will not give up and they will not back down until this government reverses all the harmful cuts it has made to our education system. Last night, over 100 parents and community minute members crowded around the Sheraton Hotel as the OSSTF negotiating team waited the whole day for the government's bargaining team to turn up. Guess what? They didn't turn up. From stopping mandatory e-learning and restoring smaller class sizes, we know that teachers are on the side of parents, and let me tell you, we are united and we cannot be divided. We are so proud of teachers and support staff for standing up for our kids, and we will keep up the pressure until a fair deal is reached, one that reverses the cuts to education and respects our kids and our education workers. As a parent, I am proud to stand up for teachers, for kids, 
and for the West End Parents Network. And I encourage you to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough, Agent Court. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in the House to speak about our government's support to invest in Ontario's infrastructure. In particular, I want to mention the recent process that allowed community organizations to apply for funding through the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, Community, Culture and Recreation Stream. This allowed organizations in my riding of Scarborough Agent Court to apply for funding to help ensure that our community is a great place to live. I especially want to acknowledge and thank YMCA and United Way Toronto for spending months planning and applying to build the Bridal Town Community Hub in my riding. I know once completed, this project will have huge benefits for families in Scarborough Agent Court. Additionally, I have supported the Armenian Community Center Chinese Cultural Center, Tamil Community Center, Chinese Professional Association of Canada, and Care First in the process of applying for funding through this stream. I know that they all submitted excellent applications that will have immense benefits to the families of Scarborough. I look forward to seeing all the projects come to fruition in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, Speaker. I want to introduce you to Cindy Shute and the son whom she calls Sweet Ethan. Ethan is seven years old, and Cindy is a single mom in Beaches, East York. Almost a year ago, on the eve of a long-promised vacation, Cindy took Ethan to a clinic for a fever that wouldn't leave. It turned out Ethan had a brain tumor that quickly spread to his spine. Cindy and Ethan's lives turned upside down. In the months since, Cindy has had to become an advocate for gentler treatments for childhood cancers, for more funding for childhood cancer research, for a proton beam therapy machine so kids don't have to travel to the U.S. as Ethan did to avoid harmful radiation long-term side effects. Cindy is lucky. She has a union job that allowed her to take time off to care full-time for Ethan and his sister, but without a GoFundMe and community support, she would not have made it through the year once her EI ran out. Government needs to listen to Cindy and to do better to support kids with cancer and their families. Cancer is stressful enough without worrying about how to keep a roof over a family's head and food on the table. Ethan, who has kept his sweet smile throughout this ordeal and has been so very brave, is scheduled to begin his final round of chemo next Monday. As we head into the holiday season, I want to ask all of you to please send prayers and light and love to sweet Ethan and Cindy. May their next year be much smoother, healthier, and happier. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today as we approach the holiday season to remind residents of Perry Sound, Muskoka, and all Ontarians of the importance of shopping locally. This is particularly true in smaller communities like the towns and villages in my riding. Buying your Christmas presents from a local store, manufacturer, or artist supports jobs in your town. Residents of Bracebridge have a great opportunity to support local jobs this year by shopping at the temporary location of Rich Hill Candles. Rich Hill Candles closed last year after a fire. While they wait for their main location to be rebuilt, they have opened a temporary store on Manitoba Street. Buying locally grown food for your hol holiday festivities supports local farmers like Curry's Corner Farm in Huntsville and Muskoka Lakes Farm and Winery in Bala. Nice. Speaking of Muskoka Lakes Farm and Winery, I want to congratulate them on winning the Excellence in Innovation Ontario Business Achievement Award this here, year. Here. Award. This is a prestigious award from Cheers the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. Buying locally produced maple syrup supports your neighbours who make maple syrup, oh, yeah. and our area has a number of award-winning maple syrup producers. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Mike and Sarah Clapperton of Loring on winning two awards for their maple syrup at this year's Royal Winter yeah, Fair, including yeah. wow. the John David Easton World Championship. These award-winning businesses demonstrate the high quality of pro products produced right in our backyard. Whether you're buying food, decorations, or presents, I encourage everyone to give the gift 
to your community. Shop local this Christmas. Shop local. Thank you. Very good. Member statements. The member for Timmins. Well, Mr. Speaker, today uh, I would say, unfortunately, the government has decided not to take bargaining seriously uh, when it comes to what's happening today with bargaining with teachers across the province. The government is pretty clear right from the outset decided that they wanted to pick a fight with teachers and teachers unions in order to advance whatever political agenda they had. And unfortunately, the people that are caught in the crossfire are students across this province and parents. And I think that's rather unfortunate, Mr. Speaker. We have a responsibility as legislators on both sides of the House, and the government should take that seriously as well, to be able to find a path forward to be able to resolve these issues. Now, the government tries to say, oh, it's the unions and the teachers that are escalating everything that's going on. But when you look at what's actually happened, the government has said we want to increase the number of classes we teach without teachers, and instead we're going to teach by e-learning, and we're going to increase class sizes. How do you expect, first of all, students and parents to respond to that? Yeah. I don't think they're very happy. Students do not want to be in classes that are larger in size and are not interested, by and large, most of them, to do e-learning. And when it comes to parents, they know that that's not a good thing for their kids. And teachers are out there on the picket line today trying to preserve a public system of education that has served this province well over the past number of years. And I think the government has to understand it has a responsibility to make sure to preserve that system as well. Next, we have the member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since 1932, the Man Cup has been awarded as the National Championship Trophy for Canadian box lacrosse. It's currently valued at more than $175,000 to replace that cup. And it finds its permanent residence in the Canadian Lacrosse Hall of Fame. In September of 2018, I rose in this chamber to announce that the Peterborough Lakers Major Series Lacrosse team had won their 16th Man Cup to tie New Westminster with the most national box lacrosse championships in Canada. Today, I rise to inform the House that this past September, the Peterborough Lakers did something that has only been done twice before in our country's lacrosse history. They won a third consecutive national championship and now stand alone as the winningest franchise in Canadian lacrosse history. This victory marks only the third time in Canadian history that the franchise has won three consecutive national championships. And I'm sure everyone here wants to know who the other organizations were. Yes, sir. Well, most recently in 1994, 1995, and 1996, it was the Six Nations franchise from my seatmates riding won three championships. The only other franchise to have won it three consecutive times. Wait for it. My own community of Peterborough in 1951, 52, 53, and a record-setting fourth time in 1954. Since the Man Cup is coming back to Ontario this year, I'm excited for a four-peat in 2020. <laughs> Thank you very much. Member statements. Okay, member for Kitchener Conestoga. Well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, it's an honor to rise here once again and update the great constituents of Kitchener Conestoga on how this government is making a significant difference for Waterloo Region. Progress that would not be possible without the strong partnership that currently exists between this government and our local municipalities. A relationship that has always been a top priority of mine. I want to recognize Barry Verbanovic, Les Armstrong, Joe Nowak, and Sh Sandy Schantz, the mayors of Kitchener, Wilmot, Wellesley, and Woolwich, respectively, and also Regional Chair Karen Redman for their time and constructive dialogue on key issues since my election. With their help, this government has advanced the interests of Waterloo Region by creating jobs, making key infrastructure investments, and enhancing care for those who need it most. We have made significant progress on key initiatives, including allowing fair and open tendering for public sector projects, Good. protecting our rural fire services by eliminating discrimination against double-hatters and volunteer firefighters, 
approving the full slate of public transit infrastructure projects applied for by the region through ICIP, and expanding home, seniors, and midwifery care, giving the green light to the new St. Boniface School in Breslau, and yes, Mr. Speaker, expansion to GO Train services, getting us closer to two-way all-day GO. I look forward to continuing the partnership we've built over the past year so that we can maintain Waterloo Region as one of the top communities in this province to grow and prosper. Thank you, Speaker. That concludes our time for member statements this afternoon. Reports by committees. I'll recognize the member.